Thank you so much, uh, the chair of this convention. Good morning. Uh, I'm happy to uh, be present in this powerful convention. The theme we are told is Young Professionals uh, 20 to Convention 2023. You answer Beyond All Limits. This theme is built uh, into the church, the worldwide church vision 2025, uh, which states Mission Impact 2025, double our membership. That's what we say worldwide as Seventh-day Adventists. So um, this, this convention is, uh, is in line with this uh, great impact, mission impact uh, program of the church. And we also say Jesus is coming soon, get involved. Uh, in the youth ministry we say, I will go home fast. I will go home fast. Uh, the rest of the church is saying, get involved. Get involved. And my church, Nairobi Central Church, has even made it to sound sweeter. They say, get involved beyond all limits. It's a beautiful blending of this thought. The youth ministry... East Kenya Union is, uh, is taking this challenge very seriously because as we speak right now, young professionals are part of the uh, uh, great youth ministry of the church. The youth ministry has two arms, two arms uh, structurally. On the one side is the young, oh sorry, the, um, uh, we call them junior youth, and junior youth has several clubs, the Adventurers Club and the Pathfinder Club. They have the Master Guides as their teaching team or leading team. And then on the other is the senior youth that has ambassadors, and then young, young adults, uh, which actually is the, the big home for the young professionals, and the PCM. PCM is Public Campus Ministries. So uh, this morning we are uh, really blessed as a department to be part of this great convention. Uh, what is a limit? What is a limit? I want us to begin our reflection this morning from this point. What is a limit? A limit is defined loosely as a peg, a hindrance, a barrier that defines or restricts the person's life. For example, a speed limit for drivers would mean restricting the car to a certain speed on a given road or part of the road. Even, the, even though the car is built or was built uh, for a much higher speed and can move faster than that limit. But the speed limit then regulates the road users to drive at a certain speed. So in this sense, therefore, a limit is a thing that does not allow you to maximize your potential. You have more, but you are limited by the hindrance. And there are several types of, of, of limits or limitations in life. We, we have a physical limitation. You can be physically challenged and so limited to a certain extent physically. You cannot probably stand on your own. You can't run. You can't lift some, some things. Uh, you can't uh, walk, etc., etc. Uh, and, and so physical limitations is one such. You may have potential. You may be an educated person, uh, a, a professional, a career person, but with the physical uh, limitations, you can only go so far. The other example is the, what we call the spiritual limitation. Spiritual limitation. The Bible in Isaiah 6 verse 1 talks about a prophet who had a vision. The prophet Isaiah. He had a vision of God. And he says he had been limited until the king Uzziah died. So he couldn't see God until the, the king was dead. Now that, that sounds very interesting, doesn't it? That someone can actually limit you to access God or to have a clear vision of God. 
I don't want to take time on it, but you, you can be clear here that spiritual limitations can really be a handcuff. If you can't see God, if you can't, for, for example, see the purpose for which you, you, you are brought into this life because of someone, there's a serious limitation spiritually. Thirdly, is, is, is what I, I call the limitation of the mind. Limitation of the mind. In Numbers chapter number 13, when the children of Israel were just about to cross over to the great promise, land of Canaan, Moses sent 12 spies. And out of the 10, uh, sorry, out of the 12, 10 were limited in their thoughts and perception of themselves. They actually described themselves as grasshoppers. As grasshoppers. vis be or against the giants of the land. Thank God for Joshua and Caleb. Because they were not negative. They were not limited in their thoughts. They said that they were actually well able to take the land in spite of the limiting uh, presence of the giants. Now that is a mental limitation. So this morning, as we talk about going beyond limits, going beyond limits, we will have to consider this whole spectrum of limitations, I suppose, in our presentation. But, my friends, I want you to know that one of the greatest moves or steps in your life you and I have to make is to free our thoughts from self-imposed or externally imposed limitations. Yes, you are chance in life and journey to your divinely appointed greatness begins with a change in your thinking. You have to purpose to change your thinking. The Apostle Paul adds in, in Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 8, he says, whatsoever thing is, uh, things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things uh, what, uh, if anything is of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on those things. It, it's actually like saying, this theme today has to challenge our thinking. Going beyond limits has to challenge the way we view life. It could involve a change of worldview. The lenses with which we view life and, and process life. And it's a very powerful influence uh, for people. J.F. Kennedy, one of the presidents of the U.S., once said, attitude is determined, sorry, altitude is determined by attitude. Very interesting. I don't know whether he had flying in mind or, or change management, but he is one of the leaders that had to move America to do things that had never been done. It is during his time that the Americans imagined they could go outside the earth into space. So if you really are destined to fly in this life, JF is saying you have a part to play and that part is you start with some internal settings and they are the settings of your thoughts. You have to begin to think big, even if you are too small. Even if you are short, you have to think as if you are tall. If you are so weak, you have to think as if you are, you are, you are uh, strong and so on. So, and finally, I want to share an example in the Bible, and then we can uh, kick off this discussion. How do we break out of limitations in this life? How do we do it? The Bible gives several examples of individuals who are young or old, sometimes very young, who pursued God and excellence in their own right and circles. And by choosing the account herein this morning, I deliberately bypass the so many accounts. Because the example I have picked has not just the texture, but it has the context that fits a young professional, if you like. It's a story of a young man, a youth, if you like, with real challenges which were imposed on him by his birth and upbringing. I don't know about you, 
But I think I really, really identify with this young man. You're born in a home that, you know, none of us chose to be born where we were born. But you find yourself born in a, into a home and, and it had a whole set of limitations in your life. And most of us have had to break the canopy, the ceiling that naturally your home set for you. This example is such. Please come to the book of First Chronicles chapter number 4. First Chronicles chapter number 4 and verse 9 and 10. Two verses. A very interesting story. Now, you, you will quickly have to appreciate the background. The background is the book of Chronicles is the most boring reading in the world. Perhaps in church, let me say. And because it has names. Sometimes names that don't make meaning or that, that, don't, that don't mean anything. Names that just, you know, list things of names. If you like, it's like visiting a cemetery. Uh, visiting a cemetery and just all you have to do all day is to look at the epistles, you know, the tombstones with the names inscribed. That's exactly what this book is about. A tombstone uh, venture. But somewhere in the middle of nowhere, verse number 9 and 10 pop up, pop up very powerfully. And I want you to pause with me and consider these two verses. The Bible is saying, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. It's right here, right? So we can read together. From, and Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. Now, this is a version that has introduced, just a minute, the preposition in. The, the, Greek, the Hebrew has with pain. Yeah. The, the Hebrew preposition is with pain, not in pain. But, but let's, let's move on. The next verse says, and the next verse says, And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you, you would do what? You would bless me indeed. And enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. The Hebrew has, that it may not grieve me. The direct translation. So God did what? Granted his prayer. Now, you can go back to the epitaphs and read the names, the other names, but these two are very powerful. I want us to spend a few minutes to consider what these mean. First and foremost, the Bible says Jabez was, and please understand, Jabez is a Hebrew name that means pain. I would like to propose we use a name that you would easily identify with. Let's speak, for example, malaria, okay? Let's speak malaria. In your mind, you know malaria is, is fever and all manner of uh, uh, terrible experiences. So his mother named him malaria. The question is, because when you say Jebus, you may never see the content. You may never see the texture of the name. The name is a label. You know, going around with a name malaria, people will just have to pause and say, Wait a minute, you call malaria? What on earth was your mom thinking? Who gave you the name? He said, my mom. He named me malaria. So why? And you would have to explain. Every time you call or you are introduced in a meeting like this, you would have to explain first why you call malaria. This is the kind of world this young man was found. Yeah, I mean, found himself in. The Bible says, he was, malaria was more honorable than his brothers. A whole, a whole lot of questions must run through your mind. Why? Why would a malaria fellow be more honorable? Because it's possible, it's possible that Jabez was born into a home before marriage. His mother bore him before she got married. So to begin with, this is a child being brought into a family. And other brothers are born as a result. And because this guy, this guy with a label, the malaria fellow, is one of us, the rest of the children have to look different. But by so doing, he had to do some serious reflection. The malaria fellow had to think deeply. How do I change my story? How do I get out of this mess that I did not choose? I just found myself in. 
And that is clear. It's right here. The Bible says, he was mohundo. It means he chose the path. He determined that I will choose to be an honorable man. I have a bad name, but I'll choose an honorable path. My friends, it starts there. It starts there. Going beyond limits begins with you doing a self-reflection, self-assessment. Perhaps your name could be the very first beginning, you know, the very first limitation you have. You are called malaria. Huh? You, you, you are called, you are called, come on, give me a name. Uh, you know, some fancy name, some fancy name. Come on, give me a name. You're not talking to me, child. Some fancy name, some fancy name. Kibogoyo. Kibogoyo. It's a nice one. Kibogoyo. Kibogoyo is, uh, you, you go around and they say Kibogoyo and first of all, you have to fight to take your space. Say, so excuse me. I'm called Kibogoyo, but I can speak. You, know I mean? you don't have to look down upon me. I can do some speaking. And you know, I'm Kibogoyo, right? I don't have teeth. And so on. The story begins with you. And this meeting, I couldn't agree more with the planners of this meeting. We begin with ourselves. Going beyond limits starts with you. Who are you? What limitations make you up? What is your texture? Are you rough by virtue of your birth, by virtue of your upbringing, and whatever, whatever. So the Bible then says, and his mother is responsible for this labor. The mother says, I will call him what? Jabez. It means because I bore him with pain. That's why I told you the, 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 Hebrew, the Hebrew text has the right meaning. The proposition in will make you miss something. Because in pain, all women bear children in pain. I don't know a woman who has had a child without pain. Actually, it's supposed to be illegal. If you have a child without pain, then you know it's an illegality. Because the Bible is clear, it's, it's a divinely imposed pain. Say, so you shall bear children in? Yes. So, then the width would make sense. Because the width means, apart from the usual pangs and the usual sorrows of having a child, this woman had a child with pain. And I already gave you the, 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 the suggestion. She probably got this child out of wedlock. In Israel, women would be stoned if they find the man responsible. Then you become a wife. If they don't, they would stone you. So it looks like she didn't show or say who the father of the child was and she had to run from one city to another, perhaps. I don't know. But the idea is when the child came, she said, I will call him malaria. I don't care what anybody thinks, but I call him Jabez. And the Bible continues to say in the other verse, verse number 10, and that's where the gist of this discussion is, and I, I'm, I'm rushing to conclude, I will not take my time. The Bible says, and Jabez did what? Called on God. It's called prayer. He dared to pray. He dared to pray. The story of Jabez would not have been recorded in the text on the passage we now look at if this man had not began with some serious reflections that I will pray about this. Going limits is not a game, my friends. It's not a wishful thinking thing. It's breaking ceilings. It's busting seams of your life. It's going crazy. And if you begin with a prayer, there is no better place than that. And the Bible says, Jabez dared to pray. Because he had spiritual limitations, but he chose to pray. And by thus doing, he became an honorable man. Yes, well behaved, perhaps after praying, God answered him. So he had no reason to keep on walking with a drooping head and feeling sorry for his name and so forth. Jabez, with a bad label, began with prayer. And when you look at the prayer, you find some beautiful things I want to point out before I stop. Point number one. His prayer says, 
bless me indeed. It's called a sanctified obsession. You're just crazy about God blessing you. You wake up and say, Lord, you're going to bless me. You have to bless me. I mean, you have to bless me, Lord. And not just any blessing. He's saying, bless me indeed. Let it be known in town that malaria is a blessed guy. He's truly blessed. So bless me indeed. A sanctified obsession. He was not a, a blessed man. He lacked blessings. He lacked material means perhaps. He lacked money. He lacked living or he was living in debt. Or, or did not have a job because his name was a hindrance. He, he, he probably was suffering from depression. But after praying that God bless him. That the Lord give him a life that is blessed. A blessed life with God. Is an experience that is over transformative. It simply lifts you up. If you choose to pursue God. Secondly his prayer said enlarge my territory. In some versions. Or enlarge my course. I call this sanctified vision. A sanctified vision. He was limited in everything. No advancements in his life. Living in a home that probably despised him. His brethren didn't like him. If they ever called him, it would be to despise him. The same thing ran through his whole years as he grew up from childhood to this point in time when he's a young man and could not pay house rent perhaps or, you know, he talked less because he didn't have friends. And, and so he is a guy with living in a cocoon. Locked up by situations and circumstances that you do not choose. Simply born a Turkana. Simply born a Mukikuyu. Simply put, born a Kalenji. Or simply put, born a Chokora. You had no choice whatsoever. But you can break out of those cocoons. Yes, this going beyond limits has to be break or bust your seams. If you dare pray. Thirdly, in the last is that your hand be with me. Very powerful. It's called a sanctified company. Sanctified company or companionship. Jabez could not see the hand of God on his life and what was happening. But in his prayer, he says, Lord, I want to feel your hand of favor upon me. I want to feel your hand of favor upon me. He's probably experiencing failure in business or taking wrong decisions or, or, or you know, what we call a dysfunctional home and a bringing in a dysfunctional home you know, imposes or accrues a whole lot of mental health issues. And many of, many of us do not sometimes understand. You can't keep friends. You can't keep a job. You, you know, you come to church, you get tired sitting. You feel like it's boring to listen to people just talk and tell us how successful they are because your life is, is nothing but, a, it's, it's, it's a box. You're boxed in. And the man says, I want to feel your hand, Lord, upon me. The favor of God's hand. Is what he was asking for. Sanctified companionship. And finally, or lastly, says that it may not grieve me. That it may not, uh, that it may not cause pain. The Hebrew says that it may not grieve me. I want you to translate it in your own, in your own words. That it may not jebes me. That it may not jebes me. I, I'm tired of being called malaria. Please, God, don't allow the blessings you give to turn into another malaria. Please, I don't, I don't want blessings. I don't want, you know, I don't want a life like this one. I'm tired of being the talk of town. I'm tired of struggling to even have a face. Please, God, when you bless me, let it not grieve me. Let it not jebus me some more. And you know what, folks? Some of us ask to go beyond limits and you land in a job. That pays you crazily. And you lose your head. And instead of living a better life that you've all been working for. 
you, you turn out to be a sorry successful person. A successful professional who cannot marry a woman. You want to marry a man. Or a successful woman professional who cannot marry a man. She wants to marry another woman. A sorry, that's a sorry state of things. I don't know if that is what it means to say bottom up. But I'm telling you the truth, my friends. Limitations in your life, and especially spiritual limitations, can cripple you mentally. I pray the next time we talk about this, we talk about mental health and how many are crippled. They're in nice suits, but crippled in mind. So, finally, and in conclusion, the Bible says, and God granted him his request. You, 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 you read the Bible many times, and there are very few instances the Bible just goes, pop, God answered the prayer. And with the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 4, and verse 3, it says, so go break your fallow grounds. Go break your fallow grounds. You've been having some potential sitting and rotting away. Just go and break your fallow ground. There, pray. Then go beyond the limits that are divinely appointed for you. Let's pray. Our Lord and Father in heaven, what a privilege to inspire young people to dare step into life by daring to pray in order to partner with you to go beyond all imaginable limits of their lives. So I pray as we go through this experience of this convention that our, our lot after here will be to go and break our own fallow grounds as Jeremiah 4 verse 3 says. So I pray in Jesus' name.